thank you everyone for being here. This is the Plat Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. Let's look at the agenda. Um, we've got, we'll review our open action items. We've got a topic on renaming agent Docker images. Oleg, do you want that to stay on the agenda for today? Mm, well, there is no abyss for me, except uh, the fact that I'm going to implement that and it's coming soon. Okay, great. All right, then Power Power 60 for Power PC 64 agent access results, and I can show a quick demo. Um, then Z390X agent terms and conditions. This is the result from the governance meeting yesterday, or yes, it was yesterday. Google Summer of Code 2020 project ideas. We'll do a quick review there. And then we've got rework going on in the Docker slave. Docker agent, uh, JNLP and SSH projects that we can talk briefly. Jim, I assume we want to give you time to talk about Docker image publishing improvement up efforts, the update there. Yep. And on Git LFS, do we need a do we need a time slot for that one in this meeting, Jim? Uh, very briefly. Okay, great. All right. Anything else that we need to add to the agenda? Nope. Okay, great. All right, so then let's go through the action items. Yes, I still have the open action item to get the Docker JEP open for platform selection rules. I think we're getting platform selection without having an implicit, an explicit set of rules, and that's that's good, but it'd be better to have the rules stated. Um, likewise, we've got an open action item, Oleg, for a Windows support policy. Uh, I assume you're okay, Oleg, with how things are evolving there. That um, it's it's somewhat ad hoc, but we're we're proceeding. Yeah, we still need to document it. Mm, right now, we are doing major work of uh, Windows Service Wrapper, and we started hitting uh, issues here and there, especially um, on um, exotic platforms where you connect around full work night. Well, exotic platforms like. Uh, Windows Server uh, Nano, so mm. yeah, not that exotic. <laughs> so we will definitely need to do something about it. But, yep. No real updates. Okay, wait, wait, wait. and you said Windows Server Nano. Great. All right, then the Windows installer code signing with Olivier Bernin, um, Alex. Anything that you need want to report there? No, it's still in a holding pattern until CDF can figure out what's going on. All right. Okay. And then Jim, on the you've started the infrastructure discussions for agents on PowerPC 64LE and S390X. Should we take this action item out as progress is being made, or what would you like? Uh, we can take that out. I think I think that's kind of going forward. So. Great. Okay. Yeah. Then we had review and discuss the Docker build rework PR, and I have not, I have not done a review of that yet. Jim, I believe you're you've continued making progress on that and awaiting arrival of agents. Uh, yeah. So that's still on the to do list. Okay. All right, great. Okay, so Oleg, you had said on the renaming agent Docker images, it's uh, coming, and that's, that's sufficient. Then the next topic, the PowerPC 64 LE agent. So I've got here, I can show, oops, let's see my Jenkins. Here's my Jenkins server with a, uh, um, showing the execution history using a PowerPC 64 LE agent as provided by Jim and uh, his team member in Brazil. Uh, so this job is the Git client plugin. It compiled just fine on PowerPC 64 LE. It, it did show a test failure and the test failure was due to a, uh, the locale setting that I had on the machine. 
So I have to remember for that particular test to set a locale that supports UTF-64 or that supports UTF-8. And I, I hadn't, so I've adjusted that now. Um, other jobs are my test jobs that are running on, on this particular environment that test for various bug conditions. Some of them, um, them are known to fail and they fail expectedly. Uh, here's the platform labeler plugin running successfully. So it looked positive. Now I've got an issue right now though that the agent is currently disconnected. And I don't understand why it's disconnected because I am still able to SSH into the machine. So this is me doing SSH to IBM Cloud Jenkins agent, following the instructions that um, were provided. And if we look at PROC CPU info, you'll see it's a Power9 architecture and there are eight cores. Hmm, that, that's a little weird. Um, no, why you're getting disconnected that is, um, and especially when you can SSH still in. Um, wonder it might be a firewall rule that might have got added or something. I, um, I, yeah, I, I don't know, <laughs> given that it's using a jump host, so mm -hmm. I've, I'm 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 accessing it through a uh, through a two step process, right? I jump mm -hmm. from I SSH that then SSH is to it again, and that's not a common use for a, a Jenkins agent. So it yeah. could be that the agent is having some issue. It could be I don't know what it is, but just to note that progress has been made and the connection technique may not be as reliable as I wanted. Here's what it says right now. It just says, hey, unexpected stream termination as I'm okay. as I'm doing this. But this is this is the same command that was running for several hours yesterday and allowed me to get those those job those results collected. Mm -hmm. Um one one thing I was talking to Raphael uh about, uh my coworker in Brazil, uh who spun up the power machine for you. Um he said that <clears throat> um <clears throat> Excuse me. For those who weren't on the email, um, this is like a temporary setup right now for the power machine. Uh, and when we get to when I, I think there's going to be a term sheet coming. I know I said I don't think there was one, but uh, I think they're really just modifying the the Z13 as uh, uh, sorry uh, S390 uh, term sheet uh, and just putting power <laughs> up to the top. Um, they said when they move it, I asked them about giving a public IP uh, so you don't have to go through that jump post. And he said, yeah, we could do that or we port forward stuff. Uh, does the Jenkins agent run on like a, some sort of port or something? Or is it just SSH? So it's, it's both. It, so, well, it, it can use it, it. The easiest way is for it to receive an SSH connection on, okay. on arbitrary port. For instance, I have... I have, you could be on port 22 or I've used it on other ports. One of my machines that's on the public internet mm -hmm. intentionally is not on port 22 to re reduce the uh, script kiddies who yes, regular yeah. probe port 22. Okay. Um, that, yeah, that's something we can talk to Raphael about um, going forward when we get a permanent home to make sure we get port forward or a public IP to hope uh, to alleviate some of this uh, disconnecting. Yeah, so so now it would be nice, I think if I could, I may need Raphael's help to check the logs on the jump host just to see if that mm -hmm. jump host is saying something about why things are being rejected. I can also turn on um, verbose here. In fact, why don't we just do that now? That's a good excuse to, to let us. So one of the nice things about how agent start is I can just do this, save it, and click launch the agent. And it will show us what it's trying to do. Love SSH. The password based authentication. Okay, that doesn't help much. So it looks like it's blocking waiting for a password prompt because the key Huh. Well, so I'll need, I don't need to do analysis in front of everybody, yeah. but, okay. but it's, 
it's it was running it is at the moment it looks like i need to give it an additional configuration that it should hey that's the expected rsa key hmm. i'll need to do some more investigating so uh, mark to investigate identify what is failing because we also had um, Ole Olivier uh, reported that he was able to connect as well. Yeah, I saw that email. That's great news that he's able to connect. All right. Any other questions on the on the PowerPC topic? Okay, so I assume next step, uh, let's see, Olivia reported next step is to get it into the inter integrated into the step to integrate into the Puppet infrastructure for, I assume, ci.jenkins.io. And right now it's not yet. I haven't seen any discussion from him yet on no discussion yet on inclusion into trusted CI. I assume that's uh, that'll be future work. Okay, then on the 390. So there the the document has been received. So the, the terms and conditions and the governance board uh, gave their support and in yesterday's meeting uh, supports uh, Olivier signing it on behalf of so signing it I wouldn't say I'm not sure I can say on behalf of because on behalf of would might imply a legal entity and we're still waiting for CDF to get through the, the whole legal entity thing but the governance board agreed, and I think Olivier is willing to do so. And he's the infra offer officer, so he's a, the best choice of person to sign it. Any questions on the 390 terms and conditions? Now, Jim, once that's signed, what's the what's the typical lead time? Do you have any guess? Um, I, I guess within the week. Uh, so if you guys get it done uh, this week, it would be probably mid next week uh, to get that machine. Uh, also, it depends if I could go ahead and and ping them multiple times <laughs> uh, to get that oven running. Um, so it, it should be common practice in terms of getting the machine up. Uh, it would just be getting the public IP that uh, might take a second. Excellent. Really good. Super. All right. Anything else on 390? Okay, then let's go on to platform of uh, the Google Summer of Code 2020 project ideas from the platform SIG. So here we've had, let's take a look. So the Jenkins project has been accepted into Google Summer of Code. And congratulations to Oleg and others who have done such amazing work to make that such a success. And as project ideas, so we've got the EDA coverage adapters that fits well under platform SIG. We've got several others, if I recall correctly. Yeah, plugin installation manager. Yeah, there it was. Thank you. Yeah. I guess the service custom distribution is also under the platform C. Yes, custom Jenkins distributions are now in the platform C. Ah, right. And the Jenkins window services in the bottom is also platform C. Right. Okay. Now, Oleg, are there things that you're seeing that that we should review here in the meeting on those project ideas? Feels like. There's lots of conversation around custom Jenkins distribution build service. It's really encouraging. Yeah, so 
I discussed uh, having a discussion on the platform SIG uh, with Rick. So it's in the developer mailing list. Rick is unable to participate in the current uh, time frame. So I proposed uh, to select a new time slot. There was a doodle meeting uh, doodle for that, but uh, the meeting time hasn't been announced yet. Okay, so. So I will ping uh, Rick. It might happen tomorrow or might happen uh, later. Um, but yeah, I will uh, host it um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I will uh, get the video posted for those who cannot participate. Yep. Great. So that, and that was for, say, for GSOC. Mm -hmm. And Rick's, Rick's specific project, was there one specific one that he, it was custom Jenkins build service? Yes. Okay. So for other projects, I'm uh, also happy to host uh, discussions if somebody wants to cover them. The Windows Service Wrapper, it was discussed multiple times before the SIG meetings. Uh, basically nothing changed uh, significantly since uh, the last year there. Except, well, uh, Windows Service Wrapper changed, uh, but uh, the project ID is still uh, there. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure if I'm asking it in the right as SIG, but uh, does the Docker uh, proposal come under the platform SIG? Technically, yes. Mm, um, I mean, could, an, yeah. could, could we get a call for that? Because I, I'm not sure Justin or Falco is uh, pretty active on the GitHub chat. I mean, Oleg, is that possible? Uh, yeah, it's possible, but yeah, you could just self-organize. So the recommendation is uh, to use mailing list. That is a threat about this project idea. Okay. And uh, ask uh, um, Andre and uh, Justin uh, to organize such meeting. Okay. So they're open to that. Uh, okay, I'll be happy to host the session. Yeah. Well, and I assume Andre and Justin are probably European time zone or U.S. time zone. Is in states, Justin is in Europe. Okay. At least it's, if I recall correctly. Ah, wrong click. Excuse my fat fingers. There we go. Ah, I would like the hyperlink, not there. All right. Excellent. And Sladen, that was you. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yeah, yeah, Mark, you're absolutely spot on. Okay. All <laughs> right. So, and, and that was one that you're interested in and want yeah. further schedule a session to meet with yeah. them. Good. I was also wondering if, if at all I could get more involved with maybe um, a, any of the Docker, uh, uh, I mean, issues or so, because apart from the new. Uh, newbie friendly ones, are there any specific issues that the team is currently working on? Um, well, are there any issues that I could tackle? There is this Docker build rework pull request right here. That certainly we would love to have additional review on it and additional, additional eyes looking at it. So it's a great excuse for you to take a look at how does the Docker build process work? How does the current process work? And what is Jim proposing as the changes to make it work differently? And those, those proposed changes are significant and, and worth, invest, worth evaluation. So that's Thank certainly, you so much. I'm not sure I would call this one newbie friendly. This is major and significant rework, but it's a good place to learn how things work today. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh -huh. Anything else on Google Summer of Code? Mm, nothing specific from me. So the usual proposal, if anyone has any other ideas in mind, uh, then uh, please uh, let us know. And uh, yeah, we will appreciate any uh, contributions, any project ideas, because yeah, it's always uh, great to have more. All right. Now, and I, I'm a, actually, I guess I should report is I'm somewhat behind schedule. Is, let's just call it what it is. I am behind schedule uh, reviewing the newbie friendly pull requests. 
but we've 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 made progress. They are in progress, um, hap happening, and the students that had submitted some newbie friendly pull requests as part of their getting familiar have made significant contributions to the Jenkins plug Git plugin and the Jenkins Git client plugin. Uh, it has JUnit 4 or JUnit 3 tests in it that they're converting to JUnit 4 and reworking in various interesting ways and using that to learn how to write tests and learning how to deal with my comments about how they write tests. So it's a real positive. Okay, next item then was rework the Docker slave. Uh, and the Docker slave, JNLP slave, and the SSH projects to support Alpine. And this is a, an open pull request that hasn't seen a lot of attention in the last two weeks. Um, it was a, it's a proposal to, I think, do something similar in terms of its build structure on the same kinds of ideas as what Jim is proposing for the Docker images themselves. This though needs more investigation and more more visiting. Jim, I wonder if this would be one where it might be good for us to have you take a look at it as well, just knowing what you know, what you've learned on the on your work, rework on the Docker image for S three ninety. Yeah, is it is it is the pull request uh, changing from uh, Open JDK to adopt? I don't or... think it's is at this point. It's just proposing to adopt to use newer Open JDK okay. images. But yeah. I think that it's a good place for us to make you aware of, of this contributor's work and him aware of your work, or him or her aware of your work. Yeah, I, I, I'd love to hop in and look at it. Yeah, you do the, uh, sorry. Oh, like the, the, did you propose the polling for Docker registries? Um, so I, I, I just took a look, I looked at the proposal and that's actually pretty cool. Uh, to do some webhooks or basically look at any updates of those base images and update ours accordingly. It wasn't me. I'm uh, pretty familiar with this project idea, if you have any questions. Uh, but yeah, originally it was Andre who proposed it. But yeah. Great. All right. Yeah. One comment about uh, agent packaging. Uh, what would be ideal to have is to have unified uh, packaging scripts, which would uh, work uh, for all our uh, master and agent images. At some point, uh, I've taken uh, scripts created by IBM uh, uh, and added them to the remoting project. Just a second, I'll find a link. And I kind of got the agent uh, packaging also working for multiple platforms. But uh, at that point, uh, unfortunately, I abandoned this pull request because uh, the priorities changed. Uh, but yeah, I'll find the link and post it um, in the agenda. But from what I have seen at that point, it was possible to create scripts, uh, which could be, for example, hosted in a separate repository. Uh, and which would be packaging multiple images and architectures uh, using the same repository structure so that we can uh, reuse uh, the same packaging scripts. Okay. Oleg, for the, the packaging, are you uh, talking about like the manifests, uh, like scripts to generate manifests? Mm -hmm. Firstly, uh, scripts uh, to generate uh, configuration images, and then, of course, okay. manifests. Because manifests would be still interesting for us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, manifest packaging approach may change if we stop using uh, Coemo uh, for generation, but still we can uh, do a lot of things. But yeah, in this repository, I just uh, decoupled uh, scripts which were related to multi-architecture packaging, and they kind of worked. Obviously, this pull request thing would have to be just uh, closed and reworked. Uh, but uh, in principle, we could have something like that. Yeah, sweet. I'll, uh, I'll poke around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when we create uh, scripts for packaging of Docker uh, of Jenkins Masters, if you uh, could just uh, document the structure, etc., uh, we could uh, create a more generic uh, framework in the next iteration.
Excellent. Thank you. Anything else on the agent agent packaging techniques and supportive platforms? I guess I have I have a, a personal interest in this one. I'll, let me offer it as a question. I've got a, a challenge that the Git client plugin needs to be able, and the Git plugin needs to be able to test many different platform versions uh, in their automation. But I don't really want to encode to test every platform combination every time. I've been using randomization. Uh, and allowing the tests to run on different variants of Linux, you know, OpenSUSE, um, Debian, Red Hat, Solit CentOS, et cetera. Is there, is there a better way to handle that in terms of using Docker agent images? Or Oleg, I think I had heard of a, a Docker image form, uh, some kind of Docker image I could embed inside an automated test. I guess maybe I'll take it up with you separately, Oleg. Mm, yeah, I might be missing something. Oh, yeah, let, let, I'll take it up with you separately. Okay. All right, next topic then, Jim, Docker image publishing improvements. Um, <clears throat> that, that's still uh, mostly the review in terms of uh, the to-dos for people to look at the PR. Um, well, one thing I wanted to add, um, uh, kind of on the previous one, has you any of you guys um, looked at distroless containers? Um, I know Google has some of um, examples uh, out there, like just running Java in a container. Or it, it basically, distroless, from what I understand, is just the runtime. So just the Python compiler, or not compiler, but Python runtime, Java runtime, um, and it you know it kind of helps with uh, security vulnerabilities because there's no shell, there's no thing that anyone can escape out of into. Um, I just thought it was pretty interesting. I started looking at it for the adopt uh, repository as another kind of, <clears throat> I guess, base image we can support, even though it doesn't even have a distro. So how would, how would that, in our case, because we do integration, I would assume that's a real struggle. We've got, we've got to have Git, we've got to have Git LFS, mm -hmm. we've got to have a shell. Um, typically we, we install some tool, Java or Java plus C compilers, Java plus. Mm -hmm. you, what you what about it. the, uh, that's why I was mentioning and thinking about the agents because are the agents just running uh, pure Java in terms of doing stuff or they also call down and uh, utilize Git and, you know, other things on those subsystems. They, they, they do. So oh, okay. like, it depends on the pipelines but they may oh okay. right fair yeah okay. so for example um what we use on ci jenkins io uh, we didn't want to manage uh, git uh, versions there so ci jenkins io for example uses jgit so it doesn't uh, rely on um, git executables at least uh, on the majority of containers uh, but uh, yeah, theoretically, uh, there might be use cases where users of images rely on whatever tools embedded. Well, even if not Git, it's likely to be a shell or something okay. like that. Uh, so mm. yeah, yeah, all containers I, are not fully isolated. Yeah, I, I don't. I, it was just very much like a stretch and like an edge case. Uh, but mm. I saw it, uh, especially for adopt organization where. There are, you know, people who pull from that image and might just want to run a uh, complete Java and not touch the uh, touch the cell if they're using like Open Liberty or something like that. Um, yeah. But j just a suggestion, I just want to throw that out there because um, I'm playing around with it. So, and, and also, if any of you guys knew anything about it, it would be great to pick your brains on that. But, anyways, sorry to go off track. Um, back, back to the. Docker imaging, uh, it's really just the pull request needs to be reviewed, uh, have people look over it um, and give some feedback. And then as we go along and get access to the S390 and get access to uh, PowerPC, uh, we can pull those in and start doing um, tests with the new pipeline. Right. Good. Okay. Anything else, Jim? 
not for that. Um, and then to like, get L- LFS, um, uh, I a linked actually, I think on the last to do list uh, to the PR where I actually talked or the issue where I talked with the developer of the LFS. Uh, he mentioned for the installed, we want to make sure we're doing that on the Jenkins user, not up on the root user. Uh, a lot of the Jenkins images that we, uh, you guys are producing, get the get uh, get LFS initialize or install. I forget what the exact command is. And he says if uh, it's per user, there is a way to do. I think passing like a system flag, uh, which will initialize it for the whole system. Uh, but then you need to configure your get LFS like um, commands or config to utilize that system. I haven't really used get LFS, so. I don't know much about that, but in my PR, I address the changes needed to uh, basically move. I, I still do the install up as root because I need the permissions, but then when it gets to the Jenkins user, when we switch over, I issue the command uh, run, you know, get LFS initial, or I think install. Yeah, and, and in my experiment yesterday with PowerPC 64 LE, um, mm. there were specifically, so I, I installed um, Git LFS um, yesterday by using the download, download the binary from the Git LFS distribution and unpack okay. it. I assume that's the technique you're using in the, in the yeah. document. Yes. Good, okay, so I used that technique and was able to install it and confirm that it minimally worked for me as a user. It completed my tests as a, as a user. Then when I ran the Jenkins agent, some of my automated tests were failing until I did some, I t- until I wiped out the workspace and did a retry. And I'm not, it, that needs more investigation from me on why I don't know that that's a PowerPC specific thing. It may, may be an indicator that my test automation for Git LFS is weak and needs to become more repeatable. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and additionally, for Git LFS, um, the, if you look at the PR or when you guys are reviewing it, uh, you'll see that uh, for the most of the install methods, uh, I'm basically pulling from the binaries that the uh, uh, maintainer produces. I got him adding S390 and, and PowerPC binaries to the releases. Uh, so I basically just check the checksums and, and install like that. Uh, the one thing that uh, you'll see in the different Docker containers is Alpine. Alpine, of course, uses Muscle uh, as its uh, C compiler. So the binaries weren't compiled with Muscle in mind. So in, he fixed it, uh, but it's, I'll have to wait until the next release when the binaries for Alpine are posted. Uh, so once those Alpine want, binaries are posted, I'll update the um, container to pull from binaries instead of pulling from the package manager uh, for Alpine. Because uh, the yeah the package the Alpine has a get, a get LFS package that someone else maintains the author does not maintain it uh, and they're usually a, always a couple versions behind and I I guess you know going with you know containers we always want to stay in sync and what versions we're offering of different tools and stuff like that um, so you know that, that's why I'm basically pulling from the binary so we always get you know one dot ten or something like that. Um, Great. Thanks. All right. Anything else on that one? It feels like will mostly resolve itself as as a result of this the pull request. As we continue working through the yes. pull request, that'll naturally resolve. Any other? Anything else on the LFS topic? Nope. That was it. Okay. Any other topics that we need to discuss today? Nothing specific from me. Yeah, I think we should spend some uh, time in the next month to discuss what are we going to do with Java B and uh, Java 12. But uh, that, it's too early for that. So you say Java 12? I missed that. Beyond 12. Oh, jo- okay. I see Java Beyond. Right. Okay. Because so Oleg on that one. I had understood that they they have now determined, or I've heard talk of a Java LTS possibly being 17. Do you yeah. have you? It might be, but 
so there is no final decision as far as I know. They wanted to have uh, Java 14 as LTS, but it looks like uh, they kick it uh, down the road for a while. For us, it's uh, definitely fine uh, because even Java 11 uh, adoption is still tremendously low. But uh, at some point, we should start preparing to newer versions because, uh, yeah, they are breaking changes which will impact us. Right. So, so for instance, I know that we had the, the uh, what was it, access there was an access violation warning that they that they'd initially with Java 11 planned to make it a hard error and then relax that. I assume by Java 14 that's become a hard error now. No, it's not. It's not. Okay. All right. Well, uh, the problem that it's used everywhere. Uh, so right now they are not sure whether it's going to ever happen. Oh, okay. All right. That's the if I remember right. That's the. Um, access reflection reflective access to um, fields and methods yeah right yeah mm. I, so yeah reflective access is uh, the list of our problems we have issues with model removal uh, because yeah, it was uh, one of the major issues with Java 11 they removed more models and more methods in the new versions and yeah, while we stay on Java 8 support, uh, we cannot adopt a new syntax, but we still need to somehow resolve all the compatibility issues. And Got we it. know that uh, we have limited support for multi-release jar in our tooling. So yeah, eventually we will need to start resolving these problems. And a nice thing uh, about Java 14 also is uh, the release of early access builds for Alpine. Uh, uh, with the muscle compiler, uh, so that'll be a nice improvement in case people need that or have tools built around that. Because um, that, that's always been a pain for, I guess, Adopt to get some of the Alpine images up into um, the official Docker images because uh, they were installing libgc on top of Alpine, which uh, they weren't overly enthusiastic about. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, so I will include that in up in future agendas. It's it's noted. Any other topics? Yeah, maybe uh, one uh, real one. Java 11, because with Java 11 we now have uh, several uh, recently reported regressions. Uh, so one issue it highlights is that we still have uh, limited test coverage for Java 11. Um, so one of issues we had historically over past releases is that uh, search CI wasn't testing with Java 11 at all. It's now fixed. Uh, so thanks a lot to Wadik for one year. Uh, so now security fixes at least get some test coverage with Java 11. Okay. Uh, but still uh, there are some reports, for example, um, uh, WebSocket support uh, doesn't work with Java 11 as it was discovered. Well, it's not a problem because it's an experimental feature and it's experimental for a reason. Uh, but uh, it's st still, uh, there are some uh, issues uh, which uh, might impact users. So I'm just uh, listening to what is what pops up in our labels in terms of uh, recent issues. So now, Oleg, mm -hmm. it looks that this this indicates you've clearly been doing triage of Java 11 issues. Thank you very much. Do we need to do we need to have a discussion about triage on those on platform specific issues? I've not been doing any triage of platform specific issues, but it seems like this might be a place for that kind of a conversation, at least about the bugs that would be a subset related to platform. Oh. It uh, would be reasonable to regularly take a look, let's say, at Docker images, because right now the most of the agent is around Docker. For Java 11, to be honest, I'm not sure, because uh, yeah, uh, the support period uh, for JEP 2.1.1 is over. And it means that now plugin maintainers or Jenkins core maintainers are generally responsible to fix issues. It's still nice to do triage if uh, we get into architectural issues. But right now we don't have such problems. Well, maybe except test coverage, but uh, it's a completely separate topic. But yeah, so so for example, I saw that 
you know, I think as, a, as one example of a possible platform issue, I think I saw that there are some cases where the, the platform or the plugin library, the shared library for pipeline that's used on ci.jenkins.io sometimes intentionally skips Windows tests. I don't, is that, I thought it was on, on the Jenkins core itself. Mm. It's not just so, sometimes. Not just Windows sometimes. Built. Yeah, Windows builds are not enabled on core. Yeah, uh, it's not enabled because we still need to fix it. Uh, we broke uh, Windows compatibility this summer and uh, we temporarily disabled Windows builds. Uh, so, yeah, almost one year later, it's still disabled. So, probably a time to do something about it. Uh, uh, yeah, all our uh, tools, including build plugins, uh, support opting out from Windows. Uh, many plugins uh, do skip it because uh, Windows infrastructure is much less stable in Jenkins. Hopefully, with ACI, it changes. But yeah, right now, Windows first it's a resource uh, for which you have to wait more for virtual machines, and also it's uh, less stable. So yeah. And it's not plugin maintainers who disable it. Okay. Mm -hmm. For some well, plugins, it really doesn't make sense uh, to test on Windows because right. uh, if they, you don't do anything platform specific, uh, most likely you have no problem with Windows. Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, some plugins like platform labeler or whatever, of course, uh, they are supposed to have some Windows coverage. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other topics we need to be sure that we include or consider for future agendas? All right. Um, ro roadmaps. Oh, oh, roadmaps. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So this is a follow up to contributor summit we had um, in uh, Brussels. Uh, I still have an action item to communicate uh, the results. Hopefully, I will do it uh, this week. Uh, but one of the items we discussed today is uh, setting up uh, top-level roadmaps for the Jenkins project so that uh, special interest groups, sub-projects, um, uh, actively developed plugins and other things uh, could, uh, can somehow declare the intent to deliver some features. Uh, so it's roadmap not in terms of feature commitment and time, but roadmap in terms of where we want to get as a project. And uh, yeah, I plan to start working on that to have an aggregated uh, roadmap. And the uh, yeah, platform Seek uh, is also invited uh, to share their vision and uh, their goals. So we can just put to them in our list. Great, thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I just realized to my horror that I have not been recording this session. So I apologize, everybody. There will be no recording of this. I cannot go back in time 45 minutes and turn on the uh, There is a recording button. <laughs> yeah, it shows that it's recording. Oh, good. I feel better. I thought I didn't record. Excellent. Maybe I'm lucky. Very, very good. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So something is being recorded somewhere. That's good. We'll take it. All right. Mm -hmm. Any other topics? So, Oh, like back to your roadmaps topic. Um, it feels like that is a good place where, for instance, the Docker image publishing rework and the Series 390 and the PowerPC, it would be, those would be reasonable to put on the roadmap. Am I as understanding yeah, uh, correctly? Yeah, that's for sure. Okay. So what is uh, my current vision? Actually to apply a roadmap uh, which was used uh, in Blotion before and which we use uh, uh, in several other projects. So instead of uh, using quotas or whatever, just have three categories. And now, later, maybe, or something similar to that, and put uh, all projects in these three buckets, maybe use some categorization, for example, platform support, infrastructure. Uh, so we'll have such uh, two-dimension matrix. I do not want to go too far with formalizing the things. So for me, it's just uh, uh, these three columns, categories, and hyperlink to location somewhere. 
whether it's Jira, uh, Jenkins IO, or something else, which provides more documentation. Great. Yeah. So we could spend some time at the next meetings to write down what we would like to see as a platform seek. That's a good one, Will, and, and that's one where contributors here could certainly, we could we begin that discussion by email and then be reviewing, so there's, I'm sure there are places where Alex has ideas of evolution that should happen with regard to Windows, Windows infrastructure. I know, Alex, you're, you're certainly doing the evolution on ACI, and if we go to, if we, as we go to AWS, I assume there will be something similar where you use the, the AWS equivalent to get us a, a faster to start Windows image on ci.jenkins.io. So, yeah, definitely. One thing I did forget I resubmitted my PR for uh, Windows master image. So, if people could review that, that'd be good. And when you say Windows master image, meaning a Windows, uh, uh, an image of Windows, a Docker image for Windows that runs a Jenkins master? Yes, that's correct. Cool. Okay. Hey, Alex, um, I guess anyone else on the call, how is those builds uh, currently handled or are they not being handled right now? Uh, the Windows ones? Yes. Uh, they're, they're being built in on ci.jenkins.io. Okay. okay. And for release purposes, they're built on and trusted. Okay. Because the, the whole build pipeline re, uh, rework I did, uh, it basically just accounted for, you know, all the Linux distributions. So obviously, you know, I don't, I don't think Windows, don't quote me, I don't think Windows works on S390. Um, but uh, I, I don't know if there is a need for multi-arch windows. Uh, maybe there's like an Alpine thing, but I don't know if the base windows thing it even works on. I'm oh, sorry, not Alpine, yeah. um, ARM, um, so. They, they do have some ARM stuff, but it's uh, difficult right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, props for you to take over the windows thing. Cause, uh, I mean, that that's difficult in itself. Uh, I don't even know where to start when it comes to windows on Docker, so. It's not too bad. All right, so I guess Alex, while we're here, I do have that question. I, I had hit a bump where I needed command line git. Is that, is that still going to be a while, I assume, before the I, ACI I, image gets changed? I should be able to look at it this week. I just, I just haven't had a chance yet with work stuff. Yeah, and, and no, no press because I've got plenty, plenty and to spare on my list of other things that need my attention. So don't, don't feel pressed to do that. I just was asking in case it was on your list, and if it's not, no big deal. I've, I've got plenty of other things I need to be doing. All right. Any other topics? Okay, then I am going. Thanks, everyone. Let's call that the end of the meeting. Thanks very, very much.